I like to travel light when I shoot something like a documentary. With the kit I put together I only need one bag and two small tripods. With this kit I don't need to sacrifice any quality and possibilities while still maintaining a very small footprint. Putting together a small minimalist kit for my documentary shooting was something I tried to do for a very long time. Because always when I shoot documentaries I go full out with multiple cameras, lenses, lights and so on. And with constraining myself I have to find creative solutions for the same problem and I found myself shooting images that I wouldn't have shot when I got full out on my kit. But don't get me wrong, it's good to have the gear for a high quality production, it's just that you need to know how to shoot with the essentials. Also having lots of gear when you are a solo filmmaker like me can have a toll on your production. You move stuff around all the time and it's heavy and it gets on you and I get tired and my creative output lowers over time and that hurts the final product. The kit I put together was used on a real short documentary I shot for a local platform. And so all I will tell you is something I have used in the real world on a production. But now we take a look at what I need for my kit. First of all, I need a camera that can shoot high quality 4K. Because in post I like to crop in to 200% because my final image will be HD. So this way I can get two different frames with just one shot. I know two cameras would be better but we want to keep our kit as small as possible. I used my GH5 for that because the 4K is sharp enough to punch in 200% without losing any quality. I also need to take care about lenses. I took my Olympus 12-40 f2.8 with me, which is an awesome all-rounder lens that can give me control over manual focus with its focus clutch. It was on the camera most of the time and to that I added my trusty Pergeo 25mm f1.8 and a Camlen 50mm f1.1. I used the Pergeo for the talking headshots because it's very very sharp and it still gives me enough background separation. And the Camlen was used for the telephoto shots with the creamy f1.1 bokeh. To keep the audio gear equally as small I took my Rode VideoMic Rycode with the dedicated extension cable and ran it directly into my GH5. The GH5's preamp are good enough to get a very clean audio signal. To keep the audio monitoring equally small I used in-ear headphones. I know it's not the best, I have over-ear headphones that are much much better but to keep it small it's good enough and I can monitor if there are any distracting sounds on set. And that's everything I have in my bag besides the batteries and the usual stuff you should take with you all the time. I didn't took any lights with me, I tried to find nice spots with beautiful available lights so I don't need any lights with me and I keep my footprint small. The two tripods were used for the interviews. First I needed to take care of audio so I put a small cold shoe onto those small light tripods and I also used a very very small newer tripod, put my 30 cm ender slider and a small banner head on that. This way I could use the tripod for interviews and for slider b-roll as well. So all in all this was my super tiny set that I used on this short documentary. But to be fair for the aerial shots I used my Phantom 3 Pro, but that's simply because I don't have any other drone but you would get the same results with something like a DJI Mini 2 since the Phantom 3 Pro is an older fella and don't produce the newest and best image on the market. So I think it's time to upgrade my drone. This set worked flawlessly for me. I use the Olympus 12-40 f2.8 most of the time and if I had more time I would have switched lenses more often but this whole shoot was done in around 5 hours. And the GH5 is a great handheld camera. I use the sliders a couple of times but most of the time I just used the camera by itself and used it handheld. I like the fluidity quality of the image stabilization so that was 
really nice for me. I was also very surprised with the audio quality of the video mic. I thought it would be worse, but it turned out to be quite good. I could have used the XLR add-on and the Octava microphone, but this way the footprint would be much, much bigger and it probably wouldn't fit into my bag as good. But I think it worked quite well and I was pleased with the result. I shot the interviews in 4K 25p 10-bit in Vlog and the B-roll stuff in 4K 50p also in Vlog, but that would only be 8-bit, so it wasn't the best idea to use it in Vlog. Uh, but I was surprised the 50p footage hold up pretty well and it didn't broke as much as I was afraid it would. So. I was lucky enough to don't get any broken footage, but I would advise to only shoot 10-bit when you are using the Vlog L profile. So this was my minimalist documentary kit and it worked for me like a charm. I know it won't work for everybody the same way because everybody has a different shooting style and like to capture audio a different way and shoot video a different way and want to use lights and all the things but for me, it worked quite nicely. So if you want to make a minimalist kit that is specifically made for you, I would advise that you take a look at the things you really, really need to make your film possible. Because if you strip away most of the stuff that you only use a couple of times, you will realize that you don't need most of your gear. You can get away without using a Steadicam or a gimbal or even a slider and just use handheld footage. And you also can get away most of the time without setting up lights when you have nice available light. As I already said in the beginning, this will not replace my usual gear. I will still use my S1, I will still use my dollies and lights and all that stuff for the high quality productions, but I think it's nice to constrain yourself and to see what you are capable of without using all the fancy gear you have. You will realize that most of the production value boils down to your talent and not to the gear that you use. If you want to check out the documentary I shot, it's on the platform online, but it's only in Austrian German, so you can watch it if you understand what we are talking about, but if you're not, you can still check it out. For the technical reasons, I will now show you the trailer for this documentary with English subtitles so you get an idea of the production quality I could achieve. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope this was inspirational for you and if you want to see more stuff like that, please let me know in the comments down below and subscribe to this channel to stay updated. And I hope you have a nice day and create something extraordinary. Kloster ist mit den, mit den gesamten Ausdehnungen einfach unübersehbar. Das ist, äh, und im Endeffekt ist es dann, wenn man das zusammenfügt, wie nicht wie ein Schatz, sondern wie eine riesige Schatztruhe. Ja, das Kloster ist eigentlich sehr bewohnt, wirklich alle Räume. Das war schon von der Heiligen Euphrasia, die den Orden gegründet hat, ihr immer wichtig bei den Menschen zu sein und, und sozial zu arbeiten und vor allem die eher am Rand gestellt sind. Je besser, dass man was kennt, umso mehr äh, ist man eigentlich dann davon begeistert. Musik